Well, I've got 2.35, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as was previously mentioned, Kristen is out sick today, so I offered to take the lead on this presentation for her. My name is Sasha Johnson. I am a senior instructional designer at the ITRC at ISU. So I've been working with the badging committee since last year, the library badging committee, not the university badging committee. Um, so this has been a really fun experience for me. And of course we have Spencer and Ben here with us and um, we'll go ahead and just get started. We first wanna um, just talk about the most important thing for faculty to be aware of is this is not mandated. It's nothing that you have to do. Um, it's for your information. It's something that you can participate in if you choose to. Um, we are not forcing anyone to do anything. It's entirely up to faculty if they want to um, acknowledge the badges as being if sufficient for students who've already completed the research path modules and how they would like to go about exempting them from doing it in their courses if they do also use the research path modules in their courses. So the backstory is that the library does provide these online research path modules. Um, they are plug and play, so to speak. They're tutorials and quizzes that you as faculty can import into your Moodle ISU courses. And they don't replace live instruction, but they can help get students up to speed and also provide a refresher for students. Uh, topics of these research path modules are intro to college level research, choosing a research topic, using OneSearch and searching the internet, as well as citing sources. So this is just a little screenshot of the research path modules. Um, there's a blurb about what it consists of, and then each module has a link to the university library's website where they have their information, and then a quiz is included for each module. Um, students are required to receive a pass grade for it to be included as part of the badge. And you are welcome to, once you pull these into your course, you can move them into different weeks, depending on how you cover these topics. And so that's just a little bit of a screenshot of how it would come into your course. It all comes into the very first topic area of your course, and then you can move those to where you would like them. So the problem was that the library had intended to promote these research path modules to be used more widely throughout the university, but that was leading to students taking these modules in multiple courses. And then sometimes they would even be taking two courses at once that would have these quizzes. So it was in a place where students would be coming to faculty and saying, okay, I just took these in another course and I have to take them again. Is there any way that I can show you that I've already taken these, right? So that they don't have to take them again because we don't want it to be busy work. We want students to learn from them and we want them to be beneficial for faculty as well. We, because we want to take the workload off of faculty and then also keep students um, learning the material but not having to redo it as busy work. So the answer was that looking at what other universities were doing, ISU was not the first university to encounter the problem. So looking at other universities, it was determined that they were already addressing this by using badges for students who completed their library training modules. In fact, Boise State and College Western Idaho are two other Idaho universities that already use this approach and their badges are compatible. And Kristen had put this on here. I believe it means that their badges are compatible across those two universities. Is that correct, Ben? Do you know? Uh, correct. So um, they will be given credit from for completing these at the College of Western Idaho. And if they transfer into Boise State, they are also recognized there by their departments and by the university there. Um, for credit at Boise State. Great, thank you for clarifying. So a little bit about what a badge is. In our context, it's a digital credential and it shows that a student accomplished something that doesn't necessarily appear on their transcript. So again, these research path modules are something done within a course that appears on their transcript, but it's not something separate that would appear on their transcript. So the digital badges appear in Moodle ISU on a student's full profile. So this is just a screenshot of someone's profile who has done all of the research path modules. 
and they are awarded as I mentioned students have to pass those quizzes that are in the import that you can pull from the university libraries resource and by pass we mean 80 percent or higher so eight out of ten or higher and then once they pass that quiz it will award the badge to them and then again instructors can choose to accept these badges as proof that the students have already done these research path modules instead of requiring them to retake the modules or they can still have the students retake the modules it's entirely up to faculty so just to give a little bit of a demo to see how you would check if badges have been earned and maybe even how to exempt students who've earned the badges in a previous course if you don't want to require them to take it again i will switch over to one of our grade books and this is just a test course that doesn't have real students and what happens is we can see that we have research path do i need to make that a little bigger sorry we have some research path quizzes here and we can see that some students have passed them so they should have been awarded those badges whereas other students have not taken them and so what you could do is if you determine that okay hypatia said that she took the research path quiz for this module in a separate course so i want to see if she has that badge you would click on that student's name and then you would view their full profile so there's a, few, a full profile link here and that's the one that's required because it won't necessarily show on this brief profile page so clicking on the full profile i can see which badges she has earned and if it's one of the ones that i want to exempt her from I can either leave that hyphen and Moodle excludes empty grades by default, so it won't count that 10 points towards her course total. Or I could actually go into it for this student by clicking on the pencil. I can look at her report only and I can choose to exclude just that activity for this student. So that is entirely up to faculty how they would like to deal with that. And then if you do have a student who says, I have taken all of these in a separate course, you can again, click on their profile and do full profile. It's down here. Sometimes it's up here and sometimes it's down here. So you kind of sometimes have to look around for the full profile link. But once you click on that, you should be able to see that they have all of these badges. Um, one other thing to think about is that they have been set to expire after two years, so 104 weeks after they have been issued, they will expire and they will have an expired stamp across them and it will also show expired in parentheses under the batch. So then you can tell that, okay, it's been two years since they've taken this, they might not, it might not hurt for them to have a refresher. <laughs> so I think that was really all that Kristen was going to go over. If anyone has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or put in the chat. We have plenty of time for questions and answers. So I um, just wanted to ask, uh, we'll, we, we are hoping to share the video with our department since clearly we did not have a big turnout today. Um, but for those who are interested, if they have follow-up questions, who is the person they should reach out to directly? That is a great question. <laughs> that will probably be Spencer or I uh, will probably be the best experts on the content and we know how to walk you through the process and everything. But if it's a content pedagogical question, it's probably us. Um, and Sasha will help us with any of the technical things, but we all did this in concert <laughs> and so we are all semi interchangeable <laughs> right and there is i mean i i could have explained there's a form isn't there spencer that they submit to request the file to import it to their course oh uh, yes i think there is um if um uh, sasha you... if you could go to library isu.edu slash library oh i could have done that sorry but yeah, we're right there and click on yeah, library. It's here somewhere. <laughs> and uh, if you go to uh, subject guides, that fifth tab there, go to instructional services. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I think, yeah, click go. And from there, 
is it the library support for online instruction, that second okay. tab? So I think that's the one. And then there's a tab on the left, um, add research path badges to your course. I believe that's the one, does it? Mm -hmm. This is where we can go and- If you um, scroll down, does it have a, the form there? After you fill out the form below, so it would be oh, this yeah. form, yes. Yeah, okay. And then the library will share the .mbz file, which is a Moodle backup file with you, and then you can import that to your course. So if you have any questions as far as importing it to your course, you can definitely call the ITRC. The front desk is extension 5880, and any of the full-time staff can help with importing course content. So if you run into any hiccups with that, you can always give us a call and we can help. Yeah. And I think you also send some instructions along with that file, mm -hmm. is that correct? Great. Hey, thank you so much, Sasha. Uh, Absolutely, did that help, Margaret? Yeah, that was great, okay, great. appreciate it. And then I'm not sure if you were going to follow up with some resources for them as well, Spencer, in an email, just so that she can forward it on to staff. Yes, I, staff I can uh, send an email with uh, a link to the to the recording. And, and also uh, this LibGuide, probably. And Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that would be perfect. OK, great. Uh, Timothy, did you have any questions or comments? I did not um, have any questions or comments. This was very interesting. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you. Kept it short and sweet. Time. I know everyone's busy, so. <laughs> that's Hopefully great. I covered that everything makes, Kristen wanted. And, uh, and that makes it more likely people will watch the video too. Yeah. I, knowing that, so. We might have to say you can start it after five minutes or I, I don't know. Maybe I've got some editing software. Perhaps I could delete the first five minutes. <laughs> and if you're recording it, are you recording it to the Zoom cloud? Um, I'm recording it using Zoom. I don't uh, know if it's going to go to the cloud or not. Okay, well, usually if you do record, you can choose on this computer or to the cloud. Oh, maybe I selected on this computer. I don't remember what I selected. I was gonna say the cloud recordings, they do have some trimming options so you can trim the front and the back of a video just right there in the Zoom portal, but. Okay. If you if you have Camtasia or something like that, you can edit it too. Yeah, I've got Camtasia, so so maybe I should do that. That would be nice. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you. Have thank a wonderful you. afternoon. Yep. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Have Bye. a good day. Goodbye.